Good evening, good evening, good evening. So you can see I'm a few minutes after 7 o'clock. Um, I'm just trying to get all the all the functionalities happening here. So let's hope it's working. We're just going to give it another minute or two or three and just allow people to come online and be live and, and, and share together in the Word. Hallelujah. I know when you're watching on replay, this is the part where it becomes a bit awkward because it's this this awkward silence, but it's fantastic. Hallelujah, we've got some people there. Hallelujah, I can see you. You can see this is the second streaming that I've started because um, I was unable to see any comments. So there where you are, if you would mind to maybe just give me a shout out, post me a comment there so that I can, can see that you are live. Hallelujah. And uh, the, the fact that I'm not talking to myself here. Yes, there we go. I can see comments. Hallelujah. Cassandra. Oh, fantastic. I can see comments. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It is so amazing to meet up with you on this platform. Hallelujah. God is good. Hey, God is good. It is so great. And it's so amazing to, to be able to pull out of this rat race in which we live. It is so amazing to just just stop for a minute. You know, we, we're all so busy and we all have, have priorities and deadlines and targets that we have to reach. And, and some days are better than others. You know, but then we have opportunities like this where we can just pull out and, and become still and just stop. And just spend time in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let's check some comments here. There's Erika from Pretoria. Hello, Erika. We have Re, oh, precious Re. Hello, family. Oh, and Desmond, my buddy. Good evening, everyone. It's so amazing to see all of you here. Keep shouting. Keep saying hello. Let's, let's flood the comments here. This is Sal Group. We're here to talk to one another. Hallelujah. And we love it. We love it. Please don't keep quiet. Let's keep talking to one another. Hallelujah. Oh, there's Precious V. Good evening, Precious V. Oh, it's so amazing. This morning I had the privilege to, to listen in and to watch in as Pastor Chris was bringing the, the message of the day. And it was so amazing, so amazing that 8 o'clock in the morning we can get a nugget that we can carry with us throughout the day. And it was so amazing, so blessed. Hallelujah. I don't know how many of you have watched Pastor Chris. Um, with his eight o'clock in the morning devotionals and and just spending some time and and this morning prior to eight o'clock oh my goodness I was rushing and then I see oh we are live and I went on live and there's Pastor Chris and he's so calm and and it's worship music playing and it just started the day right it started the day right and that was so amazing hallelujah hallelujah Please give me some more shout outs there, wherever you are, whoever you are. Let's talk together. There's Annalise. Hello, Annalise. You might be a bit late. You are here, precious Annalise, and that's all that matters. Hallelujah. That is so great. Hallelujah. God is good. So let's just start off and close our eyes and let's just pray. There where you are right now, position yourself for a in, position yourself. For the glory of the Lord. Position yourself to receive the anointing of God tonight. Hallelujah. So let's position ourselves. Let's just close our eyes and pray. Father God, tonight we just want to come before you, Lord. Father God, and we want to thank you, Lord. Lord God, we want to thank you that we know that we know that we serve the one true and living God. Father God, you are almighty God. You are the beginning and the end. You are El Shaddai, El Al Yon. Father God, tonight we just want to come and before your majesty we bow down, Lord. And we give you glory, honor and praise. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you that even as we, we pray right now, we can stand in your sovereign presence. We can stand in the Holy of Holies. And Father God, because we are standing in the Holy of Holies tonight, we come with an expectant heart, Holy Spirit, for you to come and fill us up. We stand with an expectant heart, Lord God, tonight, Father God, for miracles, signs and wonders to happen, Lord. And we thank you for this, Lord. Lord, we just give you glory, 
and then praise. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Preparation was done, but now we want to surrender to you, Holy Spirit. And we don't want to pin you down to a piece of paper and to preparation. Come and have your way. Come and lead this cell group in a way that you wanted to go. We thank you for this, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the topic for tonight that we want to talk about is guard your heart. And how do we guard our heart? And why do we have to guard our heart? Hallelujah. And, and this is something that I believe we are not talking about and enough about, you know. The church often comes and, and we talk about, we talk about mentorship. We talk about aligning ourselves. We talk about finances. But we seldom talk about guarding our heart. You see, when it comes to, to prayer sessions, then we want to talk about the armor of God. Yet it's something we should wear on a daily basis. It is important for us to guard our hearts on a daily basis as we move forward. So tonight I want to I wanna read with you. And it was a, as I was doing my research, I got upon a teaching or, or a piece that was written by Adrian Rogers, which really put it in such a nice way that even I could understand it. And, and may I remind you that it's our group tonight. And even though we're not under the same roof, even though we might be geographically away from each other, we are on this group and I can see your comments. Hallelujah. So please talk to me. Please, please give me your input. And um, let's, let's rub shoulders tonight. If you have any prayer requests, I know some other people, Pastor Chris and Calvin, they know how to pin stuff here on the comment section. I have no idea. So if you, if you have any prayer request, you can post it here or you can message me personally and I will gladly pray with you afterwards. Hallelujah. Just know that even as we are busy with this session tonight, there's prayer warriors, there is intercessors busy praying for you and I tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Anya Skipper, so amazing to see you. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. So we are talking about God Your Heart, a piece that was written by Adrian Ro uh, Rogers. And we start off with a scripture that can be found in Proverbs 4, verse 23 to 27. And it's written there, above all else, above all else. So there we have to stop. You see, we have priorities, we have targets, we have, we have things that we want to achieve. Scripture comes, the book of wisdom comes and he says, stop. Above all else, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Uh, keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet um, and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Oh my goodness. This is such a powerful scripture. And, and, and in, when, it, when we talk about the book of, of Proverbs, we, we have to remember Proverbs is like a box of chocolates. You know, you take a verse and it's those chocolates that you put in your mouth and you let it melt away and you just enjoy that chocolate. And then you get the other toffee chocolates. I know the toffee chocolates, we just chew them and swallow them and get it over and done with, right? Now, when we look at Proverbs and we look at this verse from verse 23 to 27 in Proverbs 4, these are one of those chocolates that we put in our mouth and we just savor it we enjoy it because there's so much wisdom that you and i can take from this message and from this scripture so what does it mean to guard your heart what does it mean i mean we've spoken about it on sunday last night in the discipleship course we've also spoken about this again where we have to guard our hearts above all else you know, for out of it flows the issues of life. So what does it mean to, to guard your heart? Maybe you can post me a comment there. Pop me a comment. That's how the teenagers will, will say it. Or hoi me a comment there. What does it mean to you? In your opinion, what does it mean to guard your heart? 
So, like I said, this was, this was some research about Adrian Rogers that he wrote. And he wrote there that in the Old Testament, the word heart is used more than 800 times. Now, already we know, for those of you that have done some biblical studies, the minute something is being repeated in Scripture, it means pay attention. It means something important, something valuable is about to be said here. Now, when we talk about the heart, it is mentioned or it is used more than 800 times in Scripture. That is crazy. We have to take notice of this. We cannot let the things about our heart pass us by any lightly. And then he says, but more than 200 times, 200 times out of those 800, 200 times, it deals with one's thought life, emotions, the wellspring of life, those things that motivate and mold us. So there's a lot happening in our hearts. Hallelujah. Why can't I see comments again? Are you there? So 200 times when we talk about God our heart, when scripture comes in the book of Proverbs and it says above all else, God your heart. It says above all else, God your emotions, God your thought life, God the wellspring of your life. In other words, we have to be very much aware of everything that we are dealing with on a daily basis. We have to be very much aware what it is that we ponder within our hearts uh, um, on a daily basis. It is those things that motivate and mold us. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get to this mold section just now. Just, just hang in there. There's something more about this molding section. Now the Bible calls... Uh, that the that the heart I am calling it the thought life. This is now Roger saying this. So the Bible is calling us the heart. He's calling it the thought life. And at first I thought, mm -mm, what you talking about here? But can aniso, you know? And then he explains. He says, why is the thought life so important? Why is your thought life so important? So let's just think for a minute. Let's talk about today. Let's not talk about yesterday or what we are planning for tomorrow. Today, it is still fresh in our hearts. What thoughts have you pondered in your life? What thoughts have you pondered in your mind and in your heart today? That is important. Scriptures say, above all else, guard your heart. In other words, above all else, guard your thoughts. So why is, why is thought life so important? Why did Solomon, listen to this, Solomon told his son, above all else, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. For out of it flows the issues of life. Why is it so important? I can't see any comments. Are you guys not, no longer? There we go, Annalise. Thank you for talking to me. Hallelujah. Someone is talking. Annalise is saying, why is it so easy for our hearts to feel wrong things at the end? Yeah. Why don't we know it from the beginning if God says persevere and do everything in love? I am so glad that you asked that, Annalise. And this is exactly where I am moving to with regards to God our heart and why we cannot uh, deviate and how we can get to a place of not deviate. Because you're quite right. It is so easy for our hearts to feel the wrong things, you know. It is so easy to see the bad. But we're getting to there. I'm so happy that you asked this question. This is so good. So the question is, why did Solomon tell his son to guard his heart for out of it flows the issues of life? Why did Solomon say above all else, guard your heart? It, the answer is simply this, because the thought life controls the rest of your life. Your thoughts control the rest of of your life. That is so true. So, so what did you think? You know, if you, if you can sit here tonight as you watch this video, if you can take out all your thoughts and you put it down open on a table, then we will be able to tell exactly the type of person that you are. True?
Because remember, we all became professionals when it came to facade. We all became professionals when it comes to uh, uh, um, putting up masks or fitting into a certain criteria. We're professionals in that, you know. But the fact that, that the face value looks good doesn't mean I'm authentic. It doesn't mean I'm authentic. You see, when I start putting out my thoughts up on a table and you can see my thoughts, you will start to see exactly who I tre truly am. If you have to put up your thoughts on, your, on a table and you have to pinpoint it like this, then you would see who, the person that you truly are. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Someone is here in my room. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whew. I got a script now. <laughs> so guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Sure, let me just get my, my thoughts back here. I got a bit sidetracked here. <laughs> oh yes, we were talking about if we have to lay our hearts our thoughts out on a table for everyone to see, then we will be able to tell exactly who we are. You will be able to tell who I am, who I truly am, the minute you see my thoughts. Why? Why? Because scriptures say, scriptures say, the word of the Lord says, and remember the word never lies, he says, Proverbs 23 verse 7, he says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. No, I don't know about you. Let's just get real, yeah. In my life, there were times where I got to a point where I said, okay, so I thought about this and I thought about lying or, or you know, this type of thing. I thought about it. So scripture says, as a man thinks, so, he, so it is. If you thought about it, it's as good as you've done it already. So let me just do it because I thought about it. Now, don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into that. Don't do what I did. You know, it's a lie from the enemy. So, Scripture comes and it's warning us about our thought life. It is warning us when we do not guard our heart. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. And that is so true. So, our thoughts, positive, negative, good or bad, they control our attitudes. So, our thoughts control our attitudes. Our attitudes are the sum total of our thoughts. Your attitude leads to your actions. I've got a quote from someone else a bit later where we're going to talk about exactly this again. And she puts it in such a beautiful way again. But our thoughts, positive or negative, good or bad, they control our attitude. So if you had a bad day today, if your attitude was quite bad, let's talk about the thoughts that you've entertained in your heart. And if the thoughts was, was negative, if it was bringing you down, guess what is controlling you? Guess why is it important to guard your heart with all diligence? And Annalise, I believe this is where we come back and where it might answer your question. For why is it so easy for our hearts to feel the wrong things at the end? You see, because we, we ponder these thoughts. We, we ponder these things. You know, most we've got this thing from... It's me and I will show you, right? And here we come and we entertain these negative thoughts. We entertain these thoughts that is not healthy. And the minute we do that, they start affecting our attitudes. Our thoughts become our attitudes and immediately our attitude becomes negative. Our attitude becomes like, I am not doing this no more. I am not giving this no more. And our whole attitude starts to change so the condition of our hearts is very important to god solomon the wisest man ever on earth came and he says guard your heart above everything else the condition of our hearts is very important to us so if we go and read in genesis way back in the beginning of the word why did God send the floods? Go read in Genesis. I don't want to put too many scriptures here because I've got some other scriptures here for tonight. But go read there just before the flood. God got angry because of the condition of the people's hearts. They had evil hearts. So mankind did not guard their hearts. 
And that was quite bad and that was quite sad and that caused God to destroy and send the floods at the end of the day. So I've got these four questions that I quickly want to ask you. And I'm hoping that these four questions will, will pop up some emotions within you. And the first question is, what lies do you and I believe about ourselves or the world around us? And how is that affecting our relationship with God? So what lies are we entertaining in our life? When it comes to your marriage, what thoughts are you entertaining in your heart? What, uh, when it comes to, to your spiritual walk, what thoughts are you entertaining in your heart? You see, sometimes, and we had a good uh, giggle last night, in the, in the discipleship training where, you know, we all get more so holy and you know what, pride starts to creep in because you know what, I am so blessed, I am so anointed and let me push forward and, and let me build churches and let me bring people to repentance. And then comes the pastor and he says, slow down cowboy, not now, not now, it's not the season. And we get all that back about it, you know, all in due season. Things would happen. So, so when things, what is it in your mind that is causing a division between you and God? What is it that's causing a division between you and someone? You see, guard your heart with all diligence. Because if you do not guard your heart, this relationships will go to waste. This relationship that you have with God will go to waste. Second question is, what sins or bad habits in your life are weighing us down from a higher moral conduct? What is it in your life that's weighing you down? You see, sometimes the way that we think it, if I can use a simple example, and I am not saying anything about smoking, but it's a good example. So if you are smoking and you are, have this addiction that you are carrying with you, you know what? It is this habit that you have and it's bringing you down because in your heart you think I will never be able to quit. In your mind you think, oh my goodness, it is so hard. This thing is unstoppable. It's unbeatable. You see, our mind and our thoughts already bring us to a place of failure. That is true. And listen, I'm, you're talking to an ex-smoker here. I know exactly what it is. I know the cravings. I know when you go for an hour without a cigarette, how you want to bite a hole in your table. I know that, you know. But go ask any smoker. It's just a perfect example, right? So, what bad habits are weighing you down? And if they are weighing you down, why are they weighing you down? If we want to have the answer to that why... Let's go and look at the condition of our heart. Let's go and look at the condition of the thoughts that we have. So what behaviors or habits do I know to be right, yet avoid or ignore them? <laughs> so what habits do we know is wrong, yet we choose to avoid them? Guard your heart. We know things are wrong. We know that the person in the taxi that just pushed me out of the way might be an intercessor. I know that the Bible comes and he says, bless. We know that Proverbs says a, a harsh word stirs up anger. So instead of st stirring up a harsh word, let's turn it around and let's say a soft and gentle word. Because that eases conflict. We know these things. But sometimes in our mind, because our hearts are not protected, because we do not guard our hearts, this person jumps out. And something else happened. I've got this joke. Remember when we were still in the Whitfield building there in Boxburg? The one New Year's Eve. Um, I remember it was something past one o'clock in the morning when the security company um, phoned me and says there's people that broke into church. So I got into the car and I rushed through to the building. And as I got to church, uh, there's the guy sit. He's sitting. There was two guys. The one got away. The one they, they caught him. And he sat underneath the light with his hands tied behind his back. Now, I always joke about that night. 
I always joke about that night because that is the perfect example of not guarding our hearts. You see, sometimes we can be used as a bad example. So there I am. I'm not useless. I'm a perfectly bad example. Right. So that night, I always tell people, I've locked the pastor up in the boot, you know, because then someone had to go and tell him. And boy, did I tell him. Because you know what? We feed you. We take care of you. We, we, we care for you. And yet you have the audacity to break into the church and steal from us, you know. I never guard my heart that night. And that night came someone who is not ordered by God. That night, the person that came about came out from the flesh. And that is very dangerous. Guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. Never lock the pastor up in the boot. It is not good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, guys. Why am I talking alone here? It feels like I'm all alone here. Hallelujah. So, the last question is, am I selfish, selfishly trying to find physical or emotional fulfillment through my relationships? You know what? I selfishly want a physical or emotional fulfillment. So it's all about me. It's about my physical needs. It's about my emotional needs. And that is where we're pushing forward, you know. So everything I do, I'm going to do out of selfish ambition. And listen, let's be honest on this platform. We all do that somewhere, somehow in this world in which we live. That's what we do. Somehow we are friends with someone because we know we're going to get something. Somehow we keep someone close because we know there's a benefit to it. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but there's a benefit to it. You see, there's a selfish need that is being fulfilled. Scripture comes and he says, guard your heart. Guard your heart because if I do not guard my heart against these selfish ambitions, I'm going to be known as a selfish person because the selfishness that, it, that I entertain in my heart is going to come to the foreground. Hallelujah. So, Matthew 12 verse 34. It says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. How many of you have been in a situation where you have, have spoken to people and you just listen to their conversations? And if you hear what is coming out of their mouth, immediately you know what they are entertaining within their hearts. If you want to know someone, just listen to what they talk. Just listen, is it all negative and doom and gloom and the glass is half full and, and the world is falling apart and no, 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 no. Guess what is full in their heart? If you listen to someone that is victorious, someone that say, you know what, we are faced with challenges, but this too shall pass. As we are moving forward, as we, as we progress and, and, and as we, we speak these things, Scripture says we will be known by the fruit that we bear. Scripture also comes and he says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You will be known by others, by the words that you speak. Why? Because it's, it's pondering in your, in your heart. Isn't that just amazing? You see, we have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our hearts not to entertain these things. We have to guard our hearts not to, to fall into the trap of entertaining these things in our mind and in our heart. We have to guard our heart because it will influence and pull away the relationship that we have with God. There's Cassandra. I was waiting for you, Cassandra. I was really looking forward to this. Let me just open up my letter. Yeah, there we go. God finds our heart so important and I believe that he has made reference to guarding our heart as a direct instruction for your life. Bam! Yes, direct instruction. Why? We're going to get to that just now. Why? Right? So it is. I agree. 
If you think of the heart literally, three are certain, uh, there are certain functions that the heart does. It takes in old, dirty blood, cleans it and pumps out clean blood, full of oxygen to the organs to keep them alive. If you have poison, enter your body and it is only effective when the heart has pumped it into the rest of the body and killed the organs uh, reliant on receiving blood and oxygen. That comes from the heart, much like our life. Oh, I love where you are going with this. This is so true. You need to take in the old dead and dirty, clean it within you and release it back into the world as a new, fresh and full, ooh, where are we? Full of life. If the poison should come along, it is not your job to pump it into others and kill them. Yes, I was, this is so amazing. Thank you for sharing that, uh, um, Cassandra. This is so true. The negative will come in. Go stand. For those of you that smoke, I'm, I'm in the work area, that's where we have our, our, our coffee meetings, our daily meeting is in the smoking area and a lot of solutions comes from the smoking area. But go and listen to the, 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 the conversations that's taking place. Go listen to the words that are being spoken. Guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Out of the abundance that is in your heart, the mouth will speak. You have to guard your heart so that the poison that is around you do not come out of you, but that you as an individual take control and purifies that. Oh my goodness, lovely. I get so excited, but I have to, have to start concluding this message. So Sophie McDonald wrote in an article in 2018, Sophie McDonald wrote this article and she said, yeah, it wasn't until recently that I discovered God. Remember, we're talking about God, your heart, right? She says she discovered that the word God doesn't mean a bar, seal or coat in a shield of lead. So often if we thought about, if we think about God, your heart, we think about a bar, you know, place these prison bars around my heart or we put a seal on it remember the old kings had the rings with the seal that they put in the wax you know we think about those things when we when the minute we talk about god our heart we think about that but what she says is in hebrew the word keep means interchangeable with god it literally means to set a watchman over it so Guard your heart. In other words, in Hebrew, it means literally to set a watchman over your heart. Hallelujah. Literally, go and set a watchman over your heart. So as, I, as she, that's now Sophie McDonald, poured over scripture, light bulbs were flipping on left, right and center. Um, and nowhere in the Bible does God command us to keep our hearts in our own strength. Nowhere in scripture does God say, guard your heart within your own strength. Nowhere does it say that. What does it say? It says, the Lord means for us to guard our hearts by filtering our emotions, our desires, our thoughts and responses through his word. So how do we guard our hearts? How do we guard our hearts? We've established why we should do it. We should do it for out of it flows the issues of life. Out of it will flow the poison that is within me if I entertain it. That's why. But how do I do this? How do I guard my heart? By filtering my emotions through the word of God. So let's talk about your emotions tonight. Mm, now we're in a good space tonight. So yeah, no, that's good. What, just wait until someone ticked you off. How, what's your emotions then? How did you entertain those emotions? Did you filter it through the word of God? Guard your heart. In other words, put a filter on it through the word of God with all diligence. Let's talk about our desires. Oh, that's something we don't dare speak about, pastor. Let's talk about our desires. Have you filtered your desires through the word of the Lord? We all want a beautiful house, a beautiful car, a successful career. Uh, Opa Kavanki that is a supermodel with a six pack and a tan body. That's what we want. Well, it's not so cute, Iri Manikis. 
Have we filtered those desires through the word of God? Have we taken it through the word of God to establish what is it that God wants? Let's talk about your thoughts, the thoughts that you had today. Let's talk about the thoughts that you've entertained within your mind this very day. Let's filter those very thoughts just quickly through the word of God. Let's filter it through because God is love, right? 1 Corinthians 13, 2 Corinthians 13, uh, uh, love is patient. Have your thoughts been patient? Have your thoughts been kind? Have your thoughts been in such a way of long-suffering? You see, how do we guard our hearts? We guard it. We put a watchman over it by putting it through a filter, which is the Word of God. So if I entertain a thought in my mind, if I entertain an emotion within me, then let's filter it through the Word of God. So let's say you bought a new car today. God blessed you and you've got a new car. That excitement. And that's good because he says in his word that all nations will know that you are blessed. So I can feel that emotion because it's pure. It came through that filter and it's good. Let's filter that emotion, that thought when someone ticked you off today. When someone stabbed you in the back today. Let's filter in through that. Let's filter that. The word of the Lord says forgive. 70 times 70. Laat ek net die poem reg maak hier. So jylle kan my nie sien. Jylle sien op Facebook nie. He says, Forgive 70 times 7. He says, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You see, the minute we start faltering our emotions, our thoughts, and our responses through the word of God, something entirely different starts to happen. So how do I guard my heart? By placing it on a filter through the word of God. Hallelujah. Cassandra, being a God is not to put anything under lock and key, but to check what it is. Um, what goes in is what belongs in and what not let out. What does not should be there. Yes, exactly that what we just said. And this is, you've often heard us talk about the word supplication. Now this is my word for 2020. This is a word which understanding I truly fathom in 2020. And that is the word supplication. Supplication means God's word is there. It's not moving anywhere. But I come and I align my thoughts with the word of the Lord. Supplication. I align with God. He's not moving. He's there. I, in supplication, align myself with the word of the Lord. So I guard my heart, my emotions, my feelings, my responses, my desires. I align it with God. Easier said than done, right? I'm pretty sure some of you can give a shout out, can give a hallelujah there where you are, because you know it's the truth and we all know that it is much easier said than done. Much easier said than done. So God, the word of the Lord, is the watchman that protects our souls. And what is that primary means of defense? And this is where we get back to our comment here right in the beginning from Annalise. You know, why do we feel it in the beginning at the end? How can we prevent it? With through supplication, our primary means of defense is the word of the Lord. You see, a journey of a thousand steps starts with a first step. A journey in life starts with a first step. And our first step is always supplication. If we start off with aligning ourselves with the word of the Lord, if we start our journey, if we start our desires, our, our, our uh, thoughts, our responses, if we start that off in supplication, the outcome is going to be completely different. Isn't that amazing? I hope you're also having some catching moments there. Because if we were in church now sitting in the building, I would have chased you around the building just to start speaking to me. Hallelujah. I do freaky stuff like that. Ask the congregation. Hallelujah. So how do we guard our heart? And this is where Romans 12 comes in. 
Romans 12 comes in and it says, Do not conform to this world. Cassandra said it so beautifully now about entertaining the poison from this world. Romans 12 comes in and says, Do not conform to that. Do not conform to the speech, to that which other people let out of their mouths. We know when it comes out of other people's mouths, that is what they are filled with. That is what is in their hearts. Do not allow what the poison that is within their hearts to also infiltrate your heart. Let God of love and peace and grace and mercy be within your heart. Guard your heart against the poison that's coming from this world. So do not conform, but be transformed. Transform meaning to change. Transform meaning to, to do the will that God wants us to do. That means we have to change the way we think. Listen, let me tell you, there were a time in my life many moons ago where I was also 21. No, no, I like 25. That was my best year. When I was 25, let me tell you, if I go to a place, I will tell you, nobody's telling me nothing, you know, and it would happen. But then we come and we transform, we change the way that we think. We transform and we change the way that we act and that we react towards things. Sometimes you have to lose a fight to win the war. Did you get that? Sometimes you have to lose the fight in order for you to win the war. It's no need to always push back just because you want to be heard. Sometimes it's okay to be quiet. In supplication, we, 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 we react with the love and the mercy. So I want to close off with something very interesting that, what's this guy's name? Adrian Rogers. Adrian Rogers said something very profound here. That I found in my research. Now remember how I always quote. I always quote, quote this in almost every sermon that I do. How God has created us wonderfully and fearfully in his image. Now you and I are, have been created so wonderfully and fearfully. That did you know you cannot think of two things at the same time. You can split between two thoughts very quickly in like this and your, your thought life can change. But you cannot think of two things at the same time. It's either or, not both. It can flick very quickly, but never together. So how do I guard my heart? How do I get to that point of, of, of having this watchman over my heart as I move forward? Simply. But if we go and we read in, it is the book of Joshua. Joshua. It's one of the first chapters or it's one of the last chapters where Joshua said, Let the word of the Lord never depart from your mouth. Let the word of the Lord never depart from your mouth. Because you see, if, if, if the word of the Lord is the primary focus in my heart, and the way that I work, I work for the glory of the Lord. The way that I treat people, I will treat them for the glory of the Lord, because it is the word of the Lord that will not depart from my mouth. You see, if I have already one thought happening in my mind, then the poison thought will not have room, because we've been made wonderfully and fearfully, and we cannot think of two thoughts at the same time. Let the word of the Lord never depart from your life. Hallelujah. I see this. There's Futterkis here. Oh, Marlies wants to come on screen. Marlies, I can see that you want to come on screen. How's that? I would love to bring you on screen. Give me a shout out, Marlies. I'll bring you on screen any minute. Just pop me a yes, please, and I'll bring you on screen. I don't know. I don't want to bring you on screen. And then it was... Uh, uh, finger error hallelujah but yes so absolutely guys we cannot think of two things the enemy is real he's a liar and he's a thief he's been defeated but he's still the deceiver the enemy calls him the deceiver oh Marlies wants to come on Marlies I'm bringing you on let's see if it works hallelujah so the enemy is the deceiver they call him the deceiver, the word of the Lord. So do not let him 
poison your thoughts. Do not let him bring in the lies of, of, of his minions into your life. Let the word of the Lord never depart from your life. Hallelujah. So Marlies, I can see I'm trying to add you here. It says adding, 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 but nothing is happening. So maybe it's just a bit slow. Let's just see how it goes as time goes on. Hallelujah. So this is the thought that I want to leave with you tonight. The word of the Lord teaches us that the word of God is like a double-edged sword. It can cut right through bone and marrow. So you see that that poison that we sometimes entertain in our hearts, that word of the Lord can come and remove. It can come and we can be set free. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just so amazing? Marlies, I see I get messages that I can't bring you on. It's failing. Oh, damn. Don't worry. One of these days we're going to be back uh, in the same roof in person and then we're going to speak like a spook to a spot. I'm going to love that. Hallelujah. Annalise, what a beautiful session. Very, very informative. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Bless you, Annalise. I'm so glad. You know, if this message touched one person tonight, if this message opened the eyes and the hearts of one person tonight, then it was all worthwhile. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. So guard your heart above all else, my beloved brother and sister. Above all else, guard your heart. Why? For who you truly are will come out. Do not be a liar. Do not be a murderer. Do not be an adulterer. Do not be a thief. Be the man and the woman who God has created you to be. Guard your heart with all diligence. Listen to the words that you speak. If you want to know whether you are on path, then listen to the words that you speak. Just go and think tonight as we close off this message. Go and think tonight about conversations you had today. Go and think about the responses that you gave today. Go and think about your motives behind everything. And find out who you truly are. And once you realize who you truly are, Put it through that falter, which is the word of God, and see where you stand. Let me tell you, we all, all got sin. We all fail. We all make mistakes. But that's why grace is so beautiful. So there's grace for you, even if you failed. Even if you failed today, there's grace for you. Hallelujah. Remember, if you want me to pray with you, um, you're welcome to contact me. I'm here and do not, do not face this alone. May God bless you. May He keep you. May he, may he turn His face towards you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Let's pray. Father God, tonight we just want to come and we want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for, for technology that we could rub shoulders. Thank you, Lord God, that we know, that we know, that we know that this word will not end here tonight, Father. This, world will, this word will not end by only this group of people that, that was here tonight, Father. Lord God, because your word says, it, 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 is, it declares it, it promises it, Lord God, that your word will find its purpose and it will never return void. And therefore, I pray, Father God, that uh, your people will hear this message, Lord God. Father God, I pray for revelation for every ear that hears this message, Lord God. Father, that we will guard our hearts with all diligence above all else, Father God. Father God, because it is our desire to be holy. Lord, you say in your word, be holy, for I am holy. And because you command that, it is our desire to live a holy life. Father, we have to, we cannot end this prayer without acknowledging how many times we have failed today. Father God, we are so, so standing guilty before you tonight, Father. We are guilty because we did not guard our heart. We are guilty, Father God, because we did not put a watchman over our thoughts, over our, our um, emotions, Lord. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us in Jesus' name. We are so sorry for that, Lord. Holy Spirit, we stand here and we know that we cannot do this in our own strength. 
We cannot guard our heart within our own strength and our own knowledge. We are desperately relying on you. Holy Spirit, and I want to pray for every ear that hears this message. Lord God, that, that we will have an awakening about your presence in our life. That we will have an awakening of the word of the Lord within our life. And we thank you for this, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for every person on this platform tonight, Lord. A person who realized tonight who they really are within their hearts, yet they don't tell anyone. Holy Spirit, I pray for boldness. I pray, Holy Spirit, that even as the enemy wants to remind them that they are a failure, Father God, that you will remind them of your grace and your love and your mercy. And I thank you for this. I plead the blood of Jesus over your church, your people, Lord. We thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It was so amazing to spend time with you. Thank you for everyone who's, who were talking with me and, and shared with me some wisdom. Marlies, I'm so sorry I couldn't bring you online. Oh my goodness, that would have been such a blessing. But uh, yeah, we will figure out this technology thing and we're going to do this. And we're going to sit down and have a nice chat together online. Hallelujah. God bless you. Take care of yourself. And remember, go and pray with your spouse tonight. Go and pray. And as you pray, ask for the watchman to be in your life. God bless you. Bye-bye.